February 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapter 7 and 8 from the Old Testament. So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to speak everything I command you, and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh that he must release the Israelites from his land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and although I will multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you. I will reach into Egypt and bring out my regiments, my people, the Israelites, from the land of Egypt with great acts of judgment. Then the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, when I extend my hand over Egypt and bring the Israelites out from among them. And Moses and Aaron did so. They did just as the Lord commanded them. Now Moses was 80 years old, and Aaron was 83 years old, when they spoke to Pharaoh. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Do a miracle, and you say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, it will become a snake. When Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh, they did so just as the Lord had commanded them. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a snake. Then Pharaoh also summoned wise men and sorcerers, and the magicians of Egypt, by their secret arts, did the same thing. Each man threw down his staff, and the staffs became snakes. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had predicted. The Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hard. He refuses to release the people. Go to Pharaoh in the morning when he goes out to the water. Position yourself to meet him by the edge of the Nile, and take in your hand the staff that was turned into a snake. Tell him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to you to say, Release my people, that they may serve me in the desert. But until now you have not listened. Thus says the Lord, By this you will know that I am the Lord. I am going to strike the water of the Nile with the staff that is in my hand, and it will be turned into blood. Fish in the Nile will die, the Nile will stink, and the Egyptians will be unable to drink water from the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand over Egypt's waters over their rivers, over their canals, over their ponds, and over all the reservoirs, so that it becomes blood. There will be blood everywhere in the land of Egypt, even in wooden and stone containers. Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord had commanded. Moses raised the staff and struck the water that was in the Nile right before the eyes of Pharaoh and his servants, and all the water that was in the Nile was turned to blood. When the fish that were in the Nile died, the Nile began to stink, so that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile. There was blood everywhere in the land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts, and so Pharaoh's heart remained hard, and he refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. He did not pay any attention to this. All the Egyptians dug around the Nile for water to drink, because they could not drink the water of the Nile. Seven full days passed after the Lord struck the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord, Release my people in order that they may serve me. But if you refuse to release them, then I am going to plague all your territory with frogs. The Nile will swarm with frogs, and they will come up and go into your house, in your bedroom, and on your bed, and into the houses of your servants and your people, and into your ovens and your kneading troughs. Frogs will come up against you, your people, and all your servants. The Lord spoke to Moses, Tell Aaron, Extend your hand with your staff over the rivers, over the canals, and over the ponds, and bring the frogs up over the land of Egypt. 
So Aaron extended his hand over the waters of Egypt, and frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. The magicians did the same with their secret arts and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt too. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to the Lord that he may take the frogs away from me and my people, and I will release the people that they may sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, You may have the honor over me. When shall I pray for you, your servants, and your people, for the frogs to be removed from you and your houses, so that they will be left only in the Nile? He said, Tomorrow. And Moses said, It will be as you say, so that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs will depart from you, your houses, your servants, and your people. They will be left only in the Nile. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried to the Lord because of the frogs that he had brought on Pharaoh. The Lord did as Moses asked. The frogs died out of the houses, the villages, and the fields. The Egyptians piled them in countless heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them, just as the Lord had predicted. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, Extend your staff and strike the dust of the ground, and it will become gnats throughout all the land of Egypt. They did so. Aaron extended his hand with his staff. He struck the dust of the ground, and it became gnats on people and on animals. All the dust of the ground became gnats throughout all the land of Egypt. When the magicians attempted to bring forth gnats by their secret arts, they could not. So there were gnats on people and on animals. The magicians said to Pharaoh, It is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart remained hard, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had predicted. The Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and position yourself before Pharaoh as he goes out to the water and tell him, Thus says the Lord, Release my people that they may serve me. If you do not release my people, then I am going to send swarms of flies on you and on your servants and on your people and in your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies and even the ground they stand on. But on that day I will mark off the land of Goshen, where my people are staying, so that no swarms of flies will be there, that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of this land. I will put a division between my people and your people. This sign will take place tomorrow. The Lord did so. A thick swarm of flies came into Pharaoh's house and into the house of his servants, and throughout the whole land of Egypt the land was ruined because of the swarms of flies. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your God within the land. But Moses said that would not be the right thing to do, for the sacrifices we make to the Lord, our God, would be an abomination to the Egyptians. If we make sacrifices that are an abomination to the Egyptians right before their eyes, will they not stone us? We must go on a three-day journey into the desert and sacrifice to the Lord our God, just as he is telling us. Pharaoh said, I will release you so that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the desert, only you must not go very far. Do you pray for me? Moses said, I am going to go out from you and pray to the Lord, and the swarms of flies will go away from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. Only do not let Pharaoh deal falsely again by not releasing the people to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord did as Moses asked. He removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also, and did not release the people. God, I love how you set your people apart. How you call the people of Israel, my people. How you intervene for them in the situation with Pharaoh. Um, albeit in kind of a disgusting way, but you intervene for them. Um, 
And you intervene for them and call them my people and do all these things for them. Yet these are the same people that are about to turn on Moses and will turn on you and will eventually turn on your son as well and crucify him. Yet you still continue to call us. You still want a relationship with us. I know yesterday I could have messed up more than I have any time in my life. And yet I can come to you this morning, ask for forgiveness of all of those stupid things I did. And we start new with a brand new relationship because you have cleansed me of all of that. God, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be your people. Thank you for taking such good care of us. Thank you for loving us in a way that we honestly can't even imagine. I remember one of the mentors that you put into my life saying how God loves us and how we don't get it is very similar to how we love our pets. And they will never understand how much we love them. But they're happy that it, we give them food and pet their head. <laughs> and it's kind of true. I have no idea how much you love me. But it's endless. Just like your forgiveness. Just like your mercy. Just like your grace. So today, God, thank you. Thank you for, for allowing us to be your my people. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being insistent. Thank you for being impatient when you need to be with us. Thank you for removing things from our lives that we think we desperately want. And yet you know that those things are going to hurt us or cause us harm and you remove those things. Again, because of how much you love us. So today, I ask God that you help us remember that we are chosen, that you chose us. We didn't choose you, you chose us. We are your chosen people. We are set apart and we are loved. In your son's name we pray, amen.